Hello. Welcome, everybody. This is going to be my full review of the Gigabyte G34 WQC monitor after using it daily for a month. Before I get into the review, I wanted to give a big thanks for everybody who watched, commented, and liked my unboxing video of this monitor. I did my very best to reply to all of your questions and will continue to do so for this video, so please let me know in the comments if I don't touch on something that you wanted to know. Some of your comments were very helpful. I also wanted to thank everybody who subscribed to this channel. You guys rock. This is a new channel I made primarily for monthly PC builds and the occasional product review, and your support means quite a lot to me. There will be much more to come, so if you're interested, please do get subbed. With that out of the way, let's go over a few basic specs of this monitor. Launching on Newegg on September 10th for 400 USD, this monitor sports a 34-inch ultra-wide VA panel with a resolution of 3440x1440p, creating a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. The panel has a curve radius of 1500R, a maximum refresh rate of 144Hz, and a response time of 1 millisecond. The pixel coloring utilizes 8-bit color depth and covers 90% of the DCI-P3 color spectrum. The monitor stand is height adjustable with a travel distance of about 4 inches or 10 millimeters for a max height of 20.5 inches and a minimum height of 16.5 inches. The stand enables the screen to tilt upwards approximately 20 degrees or downwards approximately 5 degrees, but does not pivot. If the stand is removed, the panel can be mounted on any 100 by 100 millimeter VESA compatible mount. On the back of the monitor, there's a built-in speaker and the I.O. is located underneath which includes two HDMI 2.0 ports, two DisplayPort 1.4 ports, and one 1 8 inch headphone audio jack. The power cable does not include a clunky power brick as it is built into the monitor itself. There is also a small joystick to interface with the onboard monitor settings menu. Some of the features of this monitor include G-Sync, AIM Stabilizer, Black Equalizer, PVP and PIP modes, and four styles of a built-in crosshair. We'll be looking in-depth at some of these features throughout the video, including things such as ghosting, backlight bleed, quality of speakers, overall build quality, as well as overall pros and cons. Timestamps will be in the description if you're only interested in one segment. First, we'll be looking at overall build quality. The overall build quality is pretty sturdy in my opinion. The monitor is solid and doesn't wobble when typing or playing games. In reviews I saw of the Gigabyte G32 QC, I saw that there was a decent amount of screen wobble even when just typing, from the stand having too much play in some areas that needed to be tightened down. This doesn't seem to be an issue with the G34 WQC, even though both models appear to be using identical stands. Gigabyte seems to have improved from model to model, so good on them for that. There is some wobble, of course, if the corners of the monitor are pushed on or if the entire desk is bumped or shifted abruptly, but that's to be expected. Although, if you were to wall mount this monitor, wobbling in general would be completely mitigated. Next, we'll take a look at the monitor menu. Pushing the joystick inward reveals the menu, which is split into four sections. Setting, Crosshair, Game Assist, and Power Off. In the Settings menu, you can find options for features such as Black Equalizer, AIM Stabilizer, PIP and PVP settings, Picture Mode settings, Overscan, Super Resolution, Language settings, and more. You can even save up to three setting presets. We'll come back to some of these features in a minute. Picture mode and black equalizer are inaccessible for me. I've tried changing an array of settings and took to the internet to find a solution for both of these disabled features, but was ultimately at a loss for answers. There was no solution in the user manual either. If you have any insight on this, please do let me know. In the crosshair settings, you can choose from four crosshairs, but cannot change the color of the crosshair, as it'll always be green. In the game assist settings, there are options for a game timer to be displayed, counting up from zero or down from a max of 99 minutes, as well as an option for a refresh rate counter. There are six locations to choose from where this information can be displayed, top, middle, or bottom of either the left or right edge of the screen. When using NVIDIA's G-Sync or AMD FreeSync with this monitor, you must first make sure that the FreeSync Premium option is turned on in the monitor menu. I use an NVIDIA graphics card, so I'll be enabling G-Sync in the NVIDIA control panel. Once FreeSync Premium has been turned on under the Gaming options in the monitor settings, 
there will be a new setting option on the left side of the NVIDIA control panel called Setup G-Sync. If FreeSync Premium has not been enabled, this option will not appear. G-Sync can now be enabled by checking the box that says Enable G-Sync and making sure that the G34WQC is selected. My experience using G-Sync was overall positive, but I ended up turning it off because of a slight flickering that sometimes occurred when using a program that was FPS sensitive. Most of the time the flickering wasn't noticeable, but it sort of became distracting to me when I did look at it. If the same thing is happening with your monitor, be sure to let me know your thoughts on the matter. For the ghosting test, I'll be using the good old UFO test. You can also use this free online test to check your own monitor for ghosting or black smear. On the left you can see the test with G-Sync, and on the right you can see it with G-Sync off. Now, keep in mind that I am filming in 1080p at 60 frames per second, so it does look better to the naked eye, but filming the UFO test never does justice to really any monitor. To me, ghosting seems pretty minimal with this panel, but it isn't the best I've ever seen. Given the price, I'd say it's much better than I expected. Again, I'll show ghosting by dragging a window with G-Sync both on and off. Overall, I don't believe severe ghosting or black smear should be a concern if you're thinking about buying this monitor for yourself. Now, backlight bleed is a common concern for many who are looking to buy a VA monitor. With this panel, backlight bleed isn't a terrible issue, but that isn't to say that it can't be seen. Backlight hotspots can best be seen when looking at a completely black screen in a very dark setting. Here, I've created a dark setting to test how bad it actually is. From sitting directly in front of the monitor, backlight bleed is not horrible. Hotspots are seen better when looking at the monitor from an angle, although this isn't the view most users would have when using the monitor anyway. By boosting the ISO on my camera, you can see where these hotspots are much better. Backlight bleed is mostly just a concern if you're watching a video or playing video games that are very dark. When regularly using the monitor, distracting backlight bleed has never been a concern for me whatsoever. Next, I'm going to be using an online monitor test called ISO. This is another free test that can be used to check for things like defective pixels, color uniformity, color distance, sharpness, gradients, and more. As mentioned in my unboxing video, my monitor did come with a slight defect in the form of a cluster of dimly lit pixels. As far as I know, this is the only defect of the panel that I got. It isn't a huge deal to me, as it isn't noticeable 99% of the time, but sometimes I do find myself looking for it just because I know it's there. I'm now going to quickly go through some of the tests on ISO that I've already used to check for dead pixels and so on. Luckily, my model has no dead pixels, unless we're counting the small dim cluster as half dead. This monitor comes with a built-in speaker on the back, and <laughs> I'm not going to mince words here, it's, it's awful. It's known that most monitors have low-quality speakers, so this is to be expected. I don't use this speaker because I use external speakers, and I feel like most people either do the same or just use headphones. I'll play a sound test that was recorded through an Audio-Technica AT2035 XLR microphone, and speaker volume is on 100. sometime in the future after some proper use, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss it. Now let's get into the specs. Coming in at a price of 400 USD, this monitor supports a 34 inch curved VA panel with a 144Hz refresh rate and touts an impressive 1 millisecond response time. Yeah, so not the best, but hey, at least it comes with a speaker. Now we'll take a look at PIP picture-in-picture picture, and PBP picture-by-picture picture settings. It's worth noting that neither PIP nor PBP can be activated while FreeSync Premium is enabled. This is a feature that can be useful in many ways, such as having two systems connected to one monitor, like I'm doing here. I have two PCs running to this monitor, one through DisplayPort and one through HDMI. In PIP mode, you can choose from three sizes for the smaller window small, medium, or large. You can also choose which corner of the screen you want the small display window to be in. In PBP mode, 
The two sources are placed side by side instead of layered on top of another. Since both sources are 1920 by 1080p, there are two large black bars that are above and below the displays. By switching the view mode from aspect to full, the black bars can be taken away, but the image will be stretched to fit the screen. In both modes, you can flip the placement of each display as well as choose which one of the inputs to draw audio from. Before I go over my pros and cons, I'm going to be looking at ratings that were given by those who purchased this monitor from Newegg. Currently, the G34 WQC has an overall rating of 4 out of 5 eggs, with the majority of buyers being pleased with the product. Rather than just looking at the positive comments, I'm going to focus more on the negative comments to see exactly why these customers were not happy, and then compare their experiences to my own. Now, do keep in mind that if you decide to purchase this monitor whenever it does come back into stock, any of these issues are liable to happen to your model. So first up we have DH, who left a rating of 4 eggs. For his cons, he lists G-Sync issues, terrible speakers, black smearing, and that his joystick was partially broken, but he was overall happy with his purchase. I agree with him about the speakers and the slight G-Sync flickering, but I don't find that this monitor has bad black smearing. It is also unfortunate about his broken joystick. Next we have Gabriel, who left a 3 egg rating. His review was short and sweet, listing the only cons as the monitor having subpar colors and hearing a noise from the electrical current around where the power connector is located. While I don't agree with him about the colors, I do have to say that hearing the current noise would be quite alarming. One of my viewers asked if I had this problem in the comments of my previous video. I'm happy to say that I don't have this issue, but sure enough, multiple people have. Gabriel returned his monitor because of this issue, and I would have done the same. Up next is Austin, who left a 1 egg rating. He was very displeased with this monitor because of a cluster of dead pixels in the lower center of his screen. Now, I personally have used a monitor for the past two years that had two dead pixels adjacent to one another, and that monitor was only 1080p. Now, those dead pixels were annoying, don't get me wrong, but they were very easy to look past. Given how much smaller the pixels are in a 1440p monitor, these pixels should be harder to spot than the ones that I used to have. It's definitely unfortunate, but dead or defective pixels are just a common flaw in a lot of monitors. I wish they weren't, but they are. Given that it looks like there are only three dead pixels in the picture that he included, and that they're closer to the edge of the screen than the center, I think one out of five eggs is a little harsh. I probably would have given three. But that's just me. And lastly, we have a rating from Adam P. He gave the monitor a one egg rating because he turned on his monitor and he was greeted with this. Now, I know that this is most likely from UPS since they were the ones who delivered the monitor, but it is something that everyone should keep in mind when being shipped a delicate electronic device. All right, onto the pros. When it comes to things that this monitor does right, the list goes on and on for me. Its price point is the first obvious pro. $400 for a monitor that has a refresh rate of 144Hz, has ultra-wide QHD resolution, 1 millisecond response time, and is G-Sync compatible sounds too good to be true. On top of that, it has a range of features that may or may not be useful to you, but hey, they're there. Colors look great, not to mention the monitor itself does too. Its minimalistic design is sure to fit almost anyone's setup. The build quality is sturdy and the stand is height and tilt adjustable, but there's also VESA compatibility in case you would want to mount it on a wall or desk arm. Playing games in ultrawide is absolutely amazing and if you're a content creator, you can go wrong with the extra screen space. In my opinion, the pros really do outweigh the cons, but now it's time for you to decide. Here are the cons. Availability, first and foremost, is where this monitor falls short. I expected this to be a very popular buy, and it was. It sold out on Newegg within the first day of launching. Last I checked, Newegg's status for this monitor was listed as out of stock, rather than on back order. Hopefully, we do see this monitor back in stock soon. Picture mode and black equalizer are inaccessible for me. Like I said earlier, I can't find a solution to this problem in the user manual or online. It isn't the biggest issue, but lacking the option isn't really cool. 
The only time I was able to use picture mode in Black Equalizer was when I was in PIP and PVP mode, which I thought was kind of strange. The built-in speaker is absolutely terrible, but at least it comes with one, so that's only kind of a con. As I mentioned in my unboxing video, my unit also came with a slight defect in the form of a cluster of dimly lit pixels in the upper right hand corner of my screen. It isn't really that noticeable when gaming or watching videos, but like I said, I find myself looking for it just because I know it's there. As I also mentioned in my previous video, there's a cable pass through located on the stand that can be useful, but not if you plan on adjusting the height of your monitor often. I found that the cables are prone to being kinked or bent too much when using the pass-through at the monitor's lowest setting and stretched a bit when it's at its tallest height. So you could use this pass-through for cleaner cable management, but keep this in mind. Because of the placement of the rear I.O., you will most likely see the cables anyway unless you're using a right-angled display port or HDMI. And lastly, I have to add other people's defects to this list of cons as well. From hearing electrical currents from the power cord to defective joysticks and dead pixels, everyone's issues must be collectively kept in mind. Luckily for me, the only defect I have was that small cluster of dim pixels, and it's very minor and easy to look past. So in conclusion, I would definitely recommend this monitor to someone looking for a great 144Hz QHD ultrawide monitor. I'm loving playing games that support ultrawide resolution, and the extra width is much appreciated when editing videos or using a timeline editing based software. At 400 USD, there really isn't anything that can compete at the moment. Given that there would be no serious defects, I would definitely buy this monitor again. What's your opinion? Did you buy this monitor, or are you considering it given it comes back in stock? If you own this monitor, I'd love to hear your experience with it. Please do let me know in the comments, as well as if you have any questions about this panel that I didn't answer. That's going to wrap up my review of this monitor. I really do hope it was helpful to you. Just a side note, I won't be uploading a PC build video this month. Due to the new hardware that's releasing soon, i.e. new Zen 3 processors and the RTX 30 series GPUs, I've decided to skip October and wait until November. I'm going to try my best to get my hands on one of the new Ryzen 5s and a 3070 to put in a build. I always sell my PCs after I build and shoot the video for them, and I feel that using brand new hardware would be more desirable for someone looking to buy a custom pre-built rig. I'm going to shake things up a little and do a how-to style build with some benchmarks, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you in the next one.